for members here assembled, for the high honor that you have bestowed upon me by electing me as a speaker of this august house. I accept and submit to your will, and I'm ready to serve as the eighth speaker of the National Assembly since our independence. I commend all the citizens who expressed interest in becoming your speaker by formally returning their nomination papers and loud the efforts of my worthy opponent in today's election, the Honorable Kenneth Otiato Marende, who also appears, happens to have been one of my distinguished predecessors, having served as the seventh speaker. My other distinguished predecessors include Sir Humphrey Sled, the Honorable Frederick Mbiti Gideon Marty, the Honorable Moses Kiprono Arab Keino, the Honorable Professor Kimetet Arab Ngeno, the Honorable Kausai Francis Sevia Olekaparo, and my immediate predecessor, the Honorable Justin Bedan Njoka Muturi. I am internally humbled and extremely privileged to now occupy this hallowed seat. Honorable members, when I, took, I look at you and visualize the grueling campaigns you have all undergone, I must say that I am proud of all of you for ultimately making it to this house a dream for everybody. I commend you. I'm delighted to note that over 55% of members of the last parliament have been re-elected. Of this category, 24 of you served in the previous parliaments. Your re-election demonstrates the confidence that the citizenry has in the leaders that they elect to this house. Spurred by this, we should therefore be confident that if we are true to our oath or affirmation of office, and responsive to the needs of our people who are sovereign will always be the people's house. Allow me at this point, honorable members, to single out and congratulate part of the leadership of the last previous parliaments who have made it back to this house. These include the honorable Adam Duale, who was the leader of the majority party in the 11th parliament and the larger part of the 12th parliament. My felicitations also go to the Honorable John Bardi, the immediate former leader of the minority party and his former deputy minority leader, the Honorable Robert Mbui. Permit me too to recognize the Honorable Farah Malim, who served as the deputy speaker in the 10th parliament. My congratulations also extend to the Honorable Emmanuel Wangwe, the immediate former majority whip, the Honorable Junet Muhammad, the immediate former minority party whip, and the Honorable Jessica Mbalu, a former member of the Presidium. I welcome you back to the service of this House. Honorable members, the National Assembly of the 11th Parliament had 68 female members. That number increased to 76 in the last Parliament, Today, this 13th parliament has seen the number rise to 82, with 29 women having been elected to represent single member constituencies. This increase is a significant step towards achieving the aspiration of the gender parity in representation as desired by our 2010 constitution. I wish to single out the Honorable Milio Diambo who is now serving her fourth consecutive term. I salute you, member for Suba North, for your resilience and continued service to our nation. Particular mention also goes out to the Honorable Lynette Toto Chepkorir, member for Bomet County, who at the age of 24 is the youngest member of the 13th parliament. Moshmiwa, you are a great inspiration to the youth for leaders of this country, and we wish you well. I'm also reminded of the premium that our society now places on the leadership qualities of persons living with disabilities. When I see seated in this chamber, 
the Honorable Timothy Wanyonyi Wetangula, my young sibling and a leader in his own right. He now commences his third term consecutive as a member of parliament and is ably joined by the Honorable Ross Museo serving her second term, the Honorable third term, the Honorable Joseph Samal Lomwa, who was here before and has come back for a second term, the Honorable Jackson Kipkemoi Kosgei, and the Honorable Martin Pepela Wanyonyi. You are a great inspiration and a beacon of inclusive leadership in our great country despite the odds. Honorable members, I also do recognize and acknowledge the Honorable Samuel Moroto, the Honorable Adam Kanan, the Honorable Gonsirai, who are currently embarking on their fifth terms, thus becoming what we refer to in the parliamentary parlance as the fathers of the house. Their parliamentary experience shall enrich the deliberations and output of this house. Honorable members, for those who served in the 12th parliament, you will recall that the standing orders were reviewed before the final adjournment of the house. Notably, the standing orders now allow for co-sponsorship of legislative proposals and bills by members. Members of this house shall also be able to co-sponsor bills with senators and vice versa, where an unidentified member shall be in charge of steering debate on a Senate bill in this house. This, in my view, is a progressive addition to the procedures of the House. Honorable members, the revision of the standing orders in the 12th Parliament also increased the number of the committees of the House. New committees include the Diaspora Affairs and Migrant Workers Committee, the Public Petitions Committee, the Public Debt and Privatization Committee, and the Decentralized Funds Accounts Committee. These changes and many others to the standing orders shall strengthen and streamline the workings of Parliament. Honorable members, my predecessor, the Honorable Justin Muturi, in his acceptance speech after being re-elected as Speaker of, for the 12th Parliament, undertook to implement a paperless system in the House. This was in line with the strategic pillar four of the Parliamentary Service Commission Strategic Plan 2019 to 2030 on the implementation of an e-parliament by automating and digitizing all systems and processes. In this regard, I urge you all to be friends with the electronic gadgets in this house and in the committees. Honorable members, speaking of the Honorable Justin Muturi, what many of you may not know is that he's not just my predecessor. He was my roommate at the University of Nairobi at the School of Law. He was also my classmate. He is my age mate and a longtime friend. We made our debut in Parliament together in the Seventh Parliament. We were appointed earlier in our years as magistrates on the same date. Indeed, I do not know whether to call it fate, sheer coincidence, or maybe it's God's plan, but whatever it is, our paths in life have always met and today they meet again. Indeed, although once in a while we have found ourselves in different political sides, our friendship with the Honorable Muturi goes back many years and I'm therefore honored today to take over from my dear friend. Honorable members, the Honorable Justin Muturi shall be remembered for the great legacy and reforms he leaves behind, and you do not have to look further, just look around. Members who have previously served in this house can attest to this. Members of the 13th Parliament shall move into the new modern offices in the tall brown building you may have seen at the corner of the parliamentary square a project that was well executed under Honorable Muturi's leadership. As the chairperson of the Parliamentary Service Commission, he has left behind an excellent and professional parliament, parliamentary service. 
His communications and rulings on various constitutional practice and procedural matters were landmark, novel, and rich in jurisprudence. I could go on and on, but all I can say, he did a great job for this House and this country. Honorable members, I am particularly honored that for the first time in the history of Parliament, the Honorable Justin Muturi has also set a president through a symbolic and formal handover process that you just witnessed when I was declared the speaker. This is not only honorable, but it is an act that shall remind us for a long time of his great leadership style. The symbolic handover process by a speaker should indeed be part of the traditions of this house, and it is a practice we should carry on. Having said this, join me now in applauding the former speaker of this house, the Honorable Justin Tony. Thank you. Honorable members, the author Gary Levy, in the book Speakers of the Canadian House of Commons, notes that presiding officers in the Commonwealth customary relinqu relinquish their right to participate in debates. Put differently, despite the title, a speaker does not speak but allows members to speak and presides over debate in the House. I'm aware that the Constitution precludes the speaker from voting on any question proposed for decision in the House. But as your speaker, I'll let my work speak for me. Honorable members, in this 13th Parliament, I undertake to prioritize two key issues. These are enhancing public trust in this House and the institution of Parliament, and nurturing and upholding committee between our two houses and between the National Assembly and other arms of government, with particular attention to our judiciary, which has often appealed for reasonable consideration by the legislature. Honorable members, the Constitution states that the authority that has been assigned to you and I under oath is a public trust. Hubert Humphrey, the 38th President, the 38th Vice President of the United States of America, is quoted to have stated that, I quote, anyone who has ever been elected to public office understands that one commodity above all others, namely the trust and confidence of the people, is fundamental in maintaining a free and open political system. In assuming our respective offices in this House, we are under a constitutional obligation to discharge our mandate in a manner befitting the offices that we have been entrusted to hold. As your speaker, I undertake to strengthen public trust in the institution of parliament. I will be keen to midwife through the Parliamentary Service Commission live broadcast of committee proceedings and the full operationalization of Bunge TV channels to highlight the work done by this House and its members. In addition to the live broadcast of chamber proceedings, I will support efforts to further actualize the provisions of Article 119 of the Constitution on petitions made to the House by adequately facilitating the work of the new Public Petitions Committee. To my mind, ensuring meaningful access to the House will, like a transparent glass, make Parliament more visible disrobed of the mystery that people might perceive of its processes. Honorable members, my second assurance to this House is that I will actively maintain committee with other constitutional bodies, promote consultation, and cultivate healthy relations with the bounds of our constitution, within the bounds of our constitution and our governing statutes. In the exercise of our oversight functions of our state offices, and public bodies, I will strive to ensure that all material information necessary for the work of Parliament is availed in a timely fashion by the persons in the National Executive ultimately responsible to this House. I shall strictly enforce the requirement enshrined under Article 153, 3, and 4 of the Constitution which requires Cabinet Secretaries 
to attend before the committees of the House to exhaustively answer questions and give full and regular reports on matters under their control. Honorable members, indeed, as some of you may be aware, I served in this House as a member, as from the Seventh Parliament, and I therefore fully understand what it is to be one of you. I have also been a senator, and hence I also fully understand what it is to be a sibling brother. I have served in the executive as a minister and assistant minister in different portfolios. I have led various reforms to the rules of procedure of this House during the seventh parliament and was the head of the delegation of the African, Caribbean, and Pacific EU Union joint assemblies. And internationally, I'll continue building on the long and rich relationship we have to not just with the SCP EU, but also the East African Legislative Assembly, the Pan African Parliament, regional integration bodies, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, and the International Parliamentary Union. Suffice to mention, honorable members, that the standing orders you enjoy using today with the committee system were drafted by yours truly, the late Bonaya Godana. Julius Sunkuli, whom I believe has been re-elected to this house, and one Bishop Kimani, then member of parliament from Nakuru. Honorable members, I have won many hearts, but one of the greatest leadership lessons I carry with me to date is that a leader is a servant of the people. I live by the great words of the 22nd and 24th US president, Grover Cleveland, who served between 1885 to 1889 and 1893 to 1897, who once said, and I quote, office holders are the agents of the people, not their masters. These words always ring true to me, and hence moving on, I'll be your servant and your agent. My eyes shall be keen to see and listen to all of you. My office will not be an ivory tower. It will be accessible to all of you. Understand to be impartial and promise to, to, it, to see to it that you are able to effectively discharge your constitutional mandate. I am fully confident of building on the past successes of this house and charting new paths that will lead us to more glory and maintain this house as the pride of all Kenyans. Honorable members, I wish to inform you that the National Assembly has organized an induction retreat for all members of this House, which will take place from 18th to 24th September 2022 at a venue to be communicated in due course. This retreat will be a great opportunity for you to thoroughly acquaint yourselves with your mandate, parliamentary processes, and the secrets and tools that will give you a head start as in serving your electorate. I encourage you to attend all these sessions. Honorable members, I wish to commend the acting clerk of the National Assembly and her able team of officers for the successful conduct of the pre swearing in orientation last month. The acting clerk has informed me that more than 95% of the members stand up for this exercise. This is a clear sign of your passion to discharge your constitutional mandate, and I encourage all of you to maintain that enthusiasm to serve our people. Honorable members, as I conclude, I unequivocally submit myself to the collective will of this House and reiterate my singular desire to serve with the impartiality, fidelity to the Constitution and the laws of this land, our standing orders, practices, precedents, and traditions of this House. I thank you all. God bless Kenya. God bless our Parliament. Honorable members, I now direct the...